Hey guys, Mr. Johnson here. So we're doing a little video for the Family Fun Science Night, and I miss you guys all. And one of my little creatures here that I have, which I'd like to show you, is my Mexican red leg tarantula. He's not really a baby, but he's not an adult yet. He's still small. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the Mexican red leg tarantula comes from Western Mexico. And it's one of the best tarantulas you can have for a pet because... It is very docile usually, and it's a very easygoing tarantula that doesn't require much care at all. If you guys hear noise in the background, I have a parrot. He's over here on his cage. I'll give you a look at him. His name is Boo. Say hi, Boo. Okay, so we're going to go back to the tarantula now, but if you hear any talking in the background, it's just my parrot. So here's the Mexican red leg tarantula setup. This is his habitat. Okay, I keep um, uh, coconut bark on the bottom, wood chips, and I keep some flat pieces of bark in there also for the, him to hide in. Now the water bowl, you may say, what's that going on over there? Well, I keep water in a sponge. He sits on top of the water, on top of the sponge, and he absorbs the water and soaks it up. So I'm gonna put the phone, the, the camera on the phone down and see if we could get a nice shot of. Now what happens is sometimes these tarantulas, when they get nervous, they kick hairs from the back of their abdomen. Now this little guy, they'll eat crickets, they'll eat wax worms, they'll eat all sorts of neat stuff. This little guy here, I've been feeding him small mice, uh, frozen thawed mice. I defrost them and I take them out and he does pretty good on them. Just going to try to keep them down. They do have large fangs. They can give a nasty bite, but the bite is harmless. It's not uh, dangerous. It's less than a bee sting, but it does hurt because of the fact that the fangs are so long. So I've had him about mm, almost three years now, and he's still not full grown. Now, if anybody's interested in getting a pet and doesn't have a lot of time or a lot of money or a lot of space, this is the perfect pet. I keep them, as you see, in a Tupperware, a large Rubbermaid container. It doesn't have to be a large one. It could be smaller. This is kind of big for him. But I keep him in here, and you only have to change their uh, cage and clean it once every four to five months. So it's an excellent pet. Uh, feeding them crickets and worm, wax worms, you'd have to feed these guys probably every week or every other week. And if it's one cricket, feeding him the, the small pinky mice that I've been feeding him, I feed him once every month. That's about it. So it's a very, very inexpensive animal to feed and keep. It costs me about a dollar a month to keep him. Uh, I keep him in the room between 75 and 80 degrees. He, he stays. Uh, I keep him near the radiator in the winter time. I don't really provide too much special heat for him because my house is warm enough. And so is where I keep the snakes. And that's pretty much it as far as taking care of him goes. This species is actually, you can buy them. They're readily available. It's an expensive species, but it's uh, protected. They're not supposed to export them anymore out of Mexico. Uh, they're protected over there. So all the ones you have to get here in the country are captive-born ones. So anyway, that's a little bit of knowledge for you guys for Family Fun Science Night on the Mexican Red Lake Tarantula. I hope to see you guys soon, and I hope everybody stays good.